you are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 The Buzz. Dot com. Hope everybody had a wonderful weekend, which, you know, let's be honest, anytime you win, it's always going to be a great weekend. I come before you now with Arkansas winning their third straight game, this time over the LSU Tigers as they finish the, well, at least they finished the game, but they actually got the boot back. Like they went and got that boot. It hasn't been in Fayetteville since 2015. And it's finally coming home as Arkansas defeats LSU 16-13 to in overtime in what I would describe a very gross, a very frustrating, a very annoying game. But at the end of the day, when you win, that is all that ever matters. Now, listen, we'll talk about some of the specifics game of the game here in just a second and get into you know what it means and who does what and where the Arkansas Razorbacks go from here and all that fun stuff. But... I'll tell you this, when watching this game, I could tell that LSU just has superior athletes. They do. Uh, They have a lame duck coach on a season that they don't necessarily care too much about anymore, especially in the fact that they're sitting at four and six now and they got to win these final two games to get bowl eligible. But they just have really, you know, they're not a team of, they're not an LSU team of old that you would take pride in beating just because of who they were or what was on the line for them or anything like that. But the thing is, is that with Arkansas, because of where you came from, you know that, to borrow the phrase from Houston Nutt, every win is precious. Every win matters. No matter how it happens, no matter what, how it, how it goes down or whatever, winning games matter. And if you need any more evidence of that, Look at the SEC West in general right now. Like Arkansas is seven and three. It's insane to think about with two games left. And three and three in conference play. Like that's their current record. That's where they stand right now. But look at this. Mississippi State's four and three. AM's four and three. Auburn's three and three. And you're three and three. So you got four teams right now in the SEC West that all have the same amount of losses. And Ole Miss is sitting at four and two. So it's not like it's out of the realm of possibility they could lose another one. Mississippi State probably not going to lose to Vanderbilt, which is just such crap that they get to play Vanderbilt. But uh, like they're, they're not going to set the world on fire either, or at least not going to be competing for the SEC West just unless Alabama completely and totally craps the bet. But still, Arkansas is still in a good position where their final game against Alabama and Missouri could put them in fourth in the SEC West. Best case, best case scenario, probably third. And at the end of the day, you know what they're going to put those standings and base those standings on? Your wins. Like, they're not going to look back and say, well, you only beat this bad LSU team by a field goal in overtime. So that doesn't, you're, not, you're not worthy of being the second best team or third best team in the West. No, they're just going to look at how you won or how many games you won. And Arkansas now has three SEC wins on the year. They have tied their SEC total from last season. And you can even make the argument that the three teams they beat this year were better than the three teams they beat last year, considering how good Texas A&M has been looking and Mississippi State, obviously, with their big win over Auburn. And uh, now with LSU, uh, you'll take these all day long. But right now, Arkansas is in a prime position to where they have continued to prove people wrong. Sam Pittman has continued to prove people wrong. Everyone at Arkansas is dead last in the SEC West this year. Everybody felt like this, you know, they last year was nice and cute and sweet, but, you know, I don't know about this Arkansas team actually competing in the West this year. They have the toughest schedule in college football. Not sure really what they're going to be able to do with it. Blah, 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 all that crap. But just like last year, this year, Arkansas continues to prove people wrong. They're seven and three, folks. They have two games left. One of them is extremely winnable, and the other one, not so much. But you are in a prime position to finish out the year eight and four, four and four in SEC play. Like, you know who else had that same record? 
You know who else, you know, what other Razorback teams were able to finish with a similar record? That 07 Arkansas team with Darren McFadden. That team went 8-4, 4-4 and four, four and four in conference play. Like, if when you put it like that and you put it in that perspective, it really sheds light on just how good this year has gone. And I'm not going to start playing the woulda, coulda, shoulda game, but just think about it this way, where you're a two-point conversion away from sitting at 8-2 and two right now. <laughs> like, what? Excuse me, sir? 8-2? and two? You're that close. Now you're, you're probably that close on the other side of things, too, and I get it. But winning games is all that matters. And now that you've beaten LSU, you have the boot coming home, you're in prime position to finish out the year strong. And it felt so good to beat LSU, too, to get that monkey off your back. To finally have those players run across the field and get the boot. To have the celebration from Cam Little hitting that last second field goal. To see the cigar smoking out in the stadium and in the locker room. That's just that's just what it's all about. That's what college football is all about. And that's what makes it so much more enjoyable. And we'll talk more about the specifics of this game here in just a second. But first, folks, I got to tell you about prize picks. I know you've heard me talk about it. It's the college football daily fantasy leader and it offers more props than anyone else in the world. And all of you that try it out today by checking out their app or their website at prizepicks.com, you will receive 100% instant deposit match up to $100 using promo code LOCKEDON. You can use the award-winning app on both the App Store and Google Play. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. It's also safe and offers fast withdrawals. So don't hesitate. Check out prizepicks.com and use promo code LOCKEDON or go to your App Store or download the app today. PrizePix is the daily fantasy made easy. Locked on Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast. All right, so let's jump into the specifics of this game with Arkansas getting the victory 16 to 13 over LSU. I'm going to just be honest about it. The offense was not good, like at all. It was anemic. I think you got to give a lot of credit to LSU being uh, causing some problems for Arkansas. But overall, that was a very poor performance by Arkansas's offense and Especially, I was kind of disappointed with some of the play calling. It seemed like uh, Arkansas at times wasn't ready for the blitz that LSU was sending, even though they had been sending it uh, against Alabama and ended up being successful. It it just doesn't seem like uh, Arkansas was ready for it at times. So frustrating to watch. But, I mean, again, you, you win, so it's really hard to complain about anything. But if you think about it, Arkansas's only touchdown in this game came because of K.J. Jefferson evading a tackle which it's amazing how many tackles he evaded where it seemed like he was sacked in the backfield but he evaded a tackle he rolled out and found a wide open Dominique Johnson who walked into the end zone and that was the only touchdown that Arkansas had was based off of a broken play and a great play made by KJ Jefferson like I'm sorry that's not something that you can look back upon as an offense be like yep yep that's a that's a good performance because KJ Jefferson goes 18 to 25 for 40, 142 yards and a touchdown. All right, and I'm pretty sure that like I need to see how long of a pass that was. I think it was a yeah, so it was a 43 yard pass for to Dominique Johnson. So you're talking about less than 100 yards of the, so 17 passes were completed by KJ Jefferson for less than 100 yards. That's not very efficient. He was also your leaning rusher where he had 14, 15 carries for 41 yards. Dominique Johnson was next with 15 carries for 40 yards. Traylon Smith, six carries for 37 yards. Reed Bauer was one of 23 yards. But yeah, you just, your offense wasn't good. They were shutting down uh, Dom, uh, Traylon Burks completely. In fact, he only had four catches for 16 yards, and that was it. Uh, they did a good job of that. They did a good job of stopping the run. And, you know, they did things to Arkansas that caused them problems. I don't think there's any way to chalk it up any differently. But, again, when you need to make plays, playmakers make plays. And Arkansas's defense, on the other end, was the unit that made plays. Because not only did they make the interception in the end zone in overtime to give Cam Little the ability to hit the game-winning field goal, But they picked him off twice, and they recovered a fumble. And if you want to really look at it that way, folks, that is the difference in this game. You know, I like to look at box scores and say, well, where's the difference in this game? 
That right there. That's the difference. LSU turned the ball over three times. Arkansas, zero. That's what won the game. Arkansas's defense took advantage of some opportunities. Great uh, interceptions by Miles Slusher as well as Busta Brown, who, of course, again, made the, made the game-winning, or essentially led to the game-winning uh, interception that led to the field goal. You had the three linebackers doing their thing like they always do, bumper pull with 13 tackles, Grant Morgan with 11 tackles, Hayden Henry with 10 tackles, three linebackers with double-digit tackles. It's usually pretty good. And Cam Whittle hit three of three from field goal range. That's it. You won the game based on that. And the thing I like about this Razorback team is sometimes they can win in a really sexy way. Like that Texas game. That was a sexy win. Complete and total domination from beginning to end. Sometimes they can win in a way of getting a hot start and having an injury to their quarterback and still willing themselves to a win like they did against a and Sometimes, like against Mississippi State, they will be able to play good enough to be able to keep it the game in within reach, but the special teams come through because your kicker's better than the other kicker, and that's what helps you win the game. Sometimes they can win that way too, and then sometimes, like they did against LSU on Saturday, sometimes they can win in a very ugly, ugly way where nobody looks good, Nobody's doing good. Both teams are just getting after it physically. But your team came out on top. Because you have players that believe. You have a coach that obviously has his players in positions to be within reach of the game. Because that's what it comes down to also, folks. Like I know that this kind of is a cliche thing to say. But if you think about it this way, just being in the games themselves can have you catch a break here and there that'll make the difference in the game. Like, yeah, we'd all love to just dominate the other team, but just being within reach, you wait for that one mistake for the other team to make, and boom, you got it. It's the same thing that happened in this game. You were competitive in this game. The other team made a mistake. You took advantage. Mississippi State, they made a, they, they, they as a team, you were within reach, but they as a team made a mistake. You took advantage. Sometimes it's how these games are going to go. And that's why just being in these games make the difference. Yeah, we'd love to dominate, but it's the SEC West for crying out loud. You're not going to be up by three or four scores against teams very often. They're not going to give up. They got athletes too. It's just about being right there within reach, and whoever flinches first is the team that ends up losing. And that's what happened with Arkansas and LSU over the weekend. Built Bar is the best-tasting protein bar of all time. If you haven't tried it now, you are the one that's missing out. That's a you problem. They say it's a protein bar, but it does not taste like one. You have to try one of these amazing bars for yourself to believe it. They're low-carb, low-calorie, low-fat, low-sugar, but high in protein, and they have all the healthy benefits while tasting exactly like a chocolate bar, which is soft, and it's covered in 100% real chocolate. So try out all their different flavors that they have to choose from today, and they're coming out with limited-time flavors every three to four days as well. So check their website often at BuiltBar.com. If you go there, use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your next order. Again, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. Locked on Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast. All right, so now we move on to Bama. You know Bama, Nick Saban won the national championship last year. They're the number two team in the country again this year. And uh, they're really good. Yeah, you know that team. Yeah, Arkansas faces them this weekend in Tuscaloosa. And it's funny because Arkansas actually opened as a 22 favor or 22 point dog, and the line has already moved to 20 and a half. So some people are feeling like Arkansas is at least going to keep it competitive, and that's kind of where I'm at too. Like I know that Arkansas got smoked by Bama last year, and the year before that, and the year before that, and the year before that, and the year before that. Like I know that they've been smoked a lot by Bama, <laughs> but. I will say that this Bama team is not as dominant as what we've seen from other Bama teams. Like, they're still really good. They're still a top five team in the country. 
but they're not they're not perfect. They're not invincible. Like Arkansas can still have success against Alabama. And just to kind of give a run through through the stats, Arkansas is doing a really good job offensively overall this season. They're averaging 31 points a game. That's pretty solid. But Bama's get uh, they're, they're 45 points a game. You're talking about exactly two touchdowns, more points per game. Arkansas is allowing 22 points per game, which is really good, but Bama's only allowing 18. Alabama it does a really good job passing the ball more so than rushing offensively. 322 yards per game passing compared to Arkansas 206. And yards allowed, Alabama, they've been stopping the run. 83 yards per game allowed to and 20, 206 yards through the air as well. Over under set at 56 and a half. And Arkansas is going to need all the breaks to go their way for them to have a chance in this game. I just want it to be competitive. And I know that that's kind of sounding lame and maple like, oh, you're just going for the moral victories and everything. Well, yeah, I am kind of. I just want to see Arkansas be competitive in this game. I want to see Arkansas go to Tuscaloosa and in the fourth quarter, the game still be in doubt. That's kind of how I felt about it against Georgia. Didn't work out. But I kind of want that against Bama. I want this to be a game to where even if Arkansas loses, there's still some positives to take away from it. I don't want them to have like what happened against Georgia, where they from the get-go, they just get hit in the mouth, game over, no business even being on the field, it's all over, done with, moving on. Like I don't want that. Nobody wants that. But I'm also not going to be an unrealistic person to believe that Arkansas is going to win this game. But if Arkansas can just go into Alabama and mess around and be around and be able to you know, keep it close, I like, I like that. Because here's the thing. LSU was able to keep it close with Alabama. They won 20 to 14 grand. That was at home, but still. Tennessee did a decent job. You know, it wasn't great, but they did a decent job of uh, keeping it close, at least there in the beginning. Uh, Florida did a good job of, you know, keeping it close. So, again, it's not impossible to think that Arkansas can keep it close because Arkansas beat LSU, kept it close. Florida is just a nightmare right now, and they kept it close. So, why not? Why not Arkansas? Why can't they be that team that actually is able to make this game competitive? They are perfectly capable of doing it. It's just a matter of actually executing it. But, hey... That's what we have this week and to look forward to. Hey, and then the pressure is all on Alabama. They got to win this one if they want to continue on to go into the college football playoff. If Arkansas loses, you're expected to. But if you win, that's when things get really fun. Appreciate everybody listening into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. Also, get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. I'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then. Locked on Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast.